Hey guys, and welcome back to the Art and Business of Writing. Today I'm joined by Jamie (laughs) Raintree. Jamie is a women's fiction author, a blogger, and a writing business and productivity teacher. Her debut novel, Perfectly Undone, will be published on October 3rd, 2017 by Graydon House. Hey Jamie, welcome to the show. Hey Chris, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, yeah, thanks so much for joining me. So today we're going to talk about something that's near and dear to the hearts of many seasoned writers as well as new writers who are trying to get their feet, you know, kind of wet into daily writing and just the writing practice. Yes, um, this is actually one of my absolute favorite topics because um, National Novel Writing Month is actually what got me first started writing. It was the first time that I realized that normal, everyday people could actually write a book. And um, and Perfectly Undone actually started out as a nano novel. That's awesome. Yeah, that for me, that was the first time I af- actually tried a writing project. A couple of years ago, my friend Eric uh, had said that he was going to write a book. And he said, hey, you should join me. And I was like, what is this? And I looked at it and I was like, how in the world am I going to write forty or 50,000 words in a month? But <laughs> but you it learn you so learn how crazy. to do it. Yeah, it does. But then when you look at the breakdown of how it's done and you know the daily goals, it's not as intimidating as it first appears. Yes, it's perfectly reasonable. Um, it usually takes me about an hour and a half to two hours a day of writing. Um, the hardest part for me is writing every single day because on the weekends I tend to take the time off to be with my family. So that's the only difficult part for me. But Really, I think most writers tend to spend about an hour writing every day anyway. So it's not really that big a stretch. No, no, it's not. So you said your first, you know, you said your book, um, excuse me, uh, Perfectly, perfectly undone. undone. You said Perfectly yeah. Undone was a, na- a National Novel Writing Month book. Talk about like how you approached creating that through uh, NaNoWriMo. Yeah, so it actually wasn't the first time that I did NaNo. I, I did NaNo for the first time in 2008. Um, and I started perfectly undone in 2010 and, um, you know, I like to every year, I like to start off with a little bit of brainstorming to make sure that I really have a solid idea before I get started. I know that a lot of people really like hold tight to their pants or identity, but I, you know, I think when you're writing that quickly, you don't have time to step back from the story and really take some time to brainstorm new ideas as you go along. So it's really important, I think, to have a strong, solid idea before you get started. So that's what I like to do every year is sit down and spend October, you know, getting to know my characters, getting to know my story. What am I trying to say? And figuring out what those big milestones are. So that's how I usually get started. Yeah, no, that's the the one thing that I've learned about Nano is that that preparation, just getting coming into it with an with an idea, something that you've thought about. Because the first time I came into it, I had no idea, and I fell behind really fast. The second time I did it, uh, I did have an idea, and I was able to get it done. So absolutely, yeah. just having an idea coming into it, like you said, knowing your characters, knowing where you want things to go, helps you to get started. So one thing that I do just from my own experiences is you have to learn to be unconscious. Like when you write, like you have to shut the editor off because if not, you're in trouble. Like, can you talk about that a little bit? Oh yeah. You know, I'm such a perfectionist. Anybody who knows me knows this. I actually, my friends call me type triple A personality. (laughs) One A is apparently not enough for me. So clearly, you know, there is a lot of crossover into that for writing. And so I spent some time before doing nano writing and just battling my internal editor constantly. And I never made any progress. And this will actually, this year I'm planning to do nano and it will be my eighth nano. And, um, and I have actually succeeded in writing 50,000 words every year. And the reason is because Nano has trained me to turn off my internal editor. And I've actually learned to love that. I mean, honestly, we spend so much time editing our novels once we finish them. There's so much time in the future to be critical of every single word. And I have learned to appreciate the pure joy of like running through the fields of, you know, flowers of the first draft, (laughs) you know, just arms spread wide open, you know running through the field and, and just enjoying the beauty of not worrying about making sure that everything is perfect and just discovering the story as I go along. So that's the thing that I love most about Nano. And I think everybody gets really intimidated by this idea of writing so quickly and it's not going to become, it's not going to come out perfect. And, 
you know, it's not, no, but no first draft ever is. So why not enjoy the process? Yeah, so no, true. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I, that's just what I love about nano. And it's really trained me to be able to do that. Even now when I'm not doing nano, I've learned to just take each draft for what it is instead of worrying about getting everything perfect every time. So I'm not plagued by my internal editor as much as I initially was. And that is one of my favorite rewards of doing nano for as long as I have. It's crazy, uh, you know, how just for that one month we can get in that mode, you know, we can get in the mode where we just can write it out, get it out, get it done. And I think the energy of being in a room with other writers and seeing their progress definitely helps out. Can you talk a little bit about just when you go into nano with other people or when you meet people within nano and you're able to, I guess, not comparatively track progress, but just see that people are actually doing what you're doing. Yes. And I have to say too, I'm a pretty competitive person. <laughs> so I, I think that helps. <laughs> but, but yes, I mean, and I've done Camp NaNoWriMo several, tried to do that several times too. And there's just something about uh, the official NaNo. There are so many people, hundreds of thousands of writers all over the world participating. And there is something about that raw energy of knowing that so many people are out there doing the same thing that you just feed off of. And I really work hard to connect with other writers during Nano. And that's how I've met a lot of my writer friends over the years is reaching out on the Nano forums, reaching out on Facebook, asking people for support. There are a lot of really great uh, hashtags on Twitter that you can follow to do sprints. Um, and, and just that connection is what really creates the energy to propel you through the entire month. So I think that is probably the most important thing when you're participating in nano is to connect with other writers because it gives you that motivation and that encouragement and accountability to make it through the entire month and a lot of the the friendships that i made through nano have continued on even past nano yeah that's what i like about nano also uh, a lot of the writers that that i you know got to know through the follow each other on instagram and twitter and now we start you know becoming friends on facebook and it's just it's fun when you when you know that there are other people out there you know doing the work you know they're out there writing they're having a good time doing it and you don't because yes. i mean i think as a writer you feel alone sometimes you know absolutely and you know the the thing is a lot of these rhymos like you and like me you know we end up continuing on with our writing it may start as just a fun challenge to see if we can do it, but a lot of people actually go and turn nano into, you know, a writing career. And I think that is so cool. And, and to know that, you know, to connect with other people that are as committed to completing a challenge as you are is really heartening, you know, to know other people that are making the sacrifices. And, and I think that that's an important skill to learn for a writing career in general is to be able to make the sacrifices, to make the commitment. And if you can learn to do that in a month, then you can take those skills that you learn and apply them to your writing career as a whole. Yeah. Now, that's a good point you bring up, just that uh, area of sacrifice. Because with, mm -hmm. with that comes some discipline when you're dealing with nano. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about it, and I want to go into it now, about the word count, you know, that it's 50,000 words, but which slices out to being, you know, 1667 a day. Yes, uh, we know that number. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, but so, but that's the thing is for people who are just, you know, just trying their hands at it, they're typically busy. Like, how do you recommend they slice out time every single day? Because one of the toughest things for me when I first did Nano and even every year is I run into Thanksgiving and that's what always trips, that I always fall behind right around Thanksgiving. And I find that last week in November, I'm writing like 2,000, 2,500 words a day. Yes, I think it's a blessing for those of us whose family drives us crazy because Nano is an excuse to run away. <laughs> like, oh, sorry, i got to hit my word count for today. I'm going to go introvert for a while. But yes, um, I think, you know, doing this as many years as I have, it, it, eventually you learn what works best for you. I think if you know how many words that you can write in an hour, that's a really important thing to bring into Nano. It, you know, most writers tend to write about a thousand words an hour, but some people, you know, write way more than that. And some people write less than that. And whatever it is for you is completely perfect for where you're at. But having that knowledge and bringing that into nano is going to help you make sure that you are allocating your time as best as you can. So if you know how many words you write in an hour, and then you can understand how many hours you need to mark off each day in order to complete your word count for the day. 
So, um, and then also in addition to that, some people don't want to write every day and that's perfectly okay. I think if you go into it knowing ahead of time what you are capable of and which days you are not able to write and, you know, take that into account and, and shift your daily word count accordingly, then you can still be really successful at NaNo. So for instance, if you don't like to write on the weekends, then you will need to up your word count during the week. Or vice versa, I've heard other people say that they can't write during the week because of work, and so they write on the weekends, and they'll sit down and write 5,000 words every day on on each weekend day. So, you know, the same thing with Thanksgiving is you just have to, if you know that you are going to be busy during Thanksgiving, then if you mark off those days on your calendar and then do the math, I know we're writers, we don't do math, but (laughs) (laughs) yes. A certain amount of math must be done. Um, so if you, you know, cross off as many days as you can, as you know that you're not going to be able to write and then go ahead and redo the math for your daily word count, then that'll get you a lot further ahead on knowing what you're actually going to be able to accomplish for the month. Um, in addition to that, there, where I used to live, they also did an all day Thanksgiving write in. So if you're able to do that, then that's another cool way to actually use Thanksgiving to your advantage. So be sure to connect with your local group on the Nano website and um, see if they're running write ins. That's a, a great way to get as many words in as possible and to actually use Thanksgiving weekend to your advantage. I love write ins. True story. Uh, last year, I was looking for a write-in in my city, and I couldn't find one. And then one guy popped up and said, hey, I, I'm looking for a write-in, too. Him and I, we still write together, like, almost every Sunday. Yes, I've actually incorporated, <laughs> I've incorporated write-ins into my regular life because I do love them so much. Um, and I, I and if you aren't able to even meet people um, in person, I actually used to live in a small town. So I connected with people online, and we would do sprints online. So a sprint is where you set an allotted amount of time and you all write for that amount of time and then check in at the end with how many words you've written. And it's amazing like knowing that you're not you're not necessarily racing the other people that you're working with, but just having that focused amount of time, it's amazing how much you can write in that short period of time. And you know, I would do like say three or four 20 minute sprints and be done for the day and it goes so quickly. So I, I just love doing that. Yeah, writing sprints are a lot of fun. And if you guys, you know, are interested in doing writing sprints, just you can go to Twitter and just do a hashtag writing sprint and you'll see so many people doing them on a regular basis, not just during NAMNO, just all year long. People are looking for other people to write with. And like Jamie said, it's 20 minutes you're writing and then you check back in and you just, hey, I wrote, you know, five, six hundred words. Great. Let's start again in five minutes and you're back at it. It's so much fun. Yes. I just, and just having that start and stop time, you're easier. It's easier to drown out all the other noise around you for that short amount of time. Yeah. It's, it's, I love the, it's kind of like the Pomodoro method, just that concept of working with time instead of working against time. Yes, absolutely. Now let's talk about just encouragement, you know, because people do fall behind. We've given, you know, you've given some great tools, you know, the writing sprints, the, the write-ins, you know, finding people to write in with. But invariably, we, people fall behind, things happen, stuff comes out of the blue, and then we find ourselves in that last week, week and a half where, you know, we're, we're supposed to be at 38 or 40,000 words, and we find ourselves at 22, 23. You know, how do we just stay the course and not give up? Yeah, because those big word counts are so intimidating. And if you even fall behind a day or two, like for me, you know, a 3,000 or a 4,000 word day is a rare, rare thing. So even for me, if I fall behind a day or two, it can be pretty discouraging to feel like, how do I ever possibly catch up? And uh, one great tool that the Nano website has is if you go onto your profile and, and look at your stats, they'll actually re calculate the words for you based on where you're at currently. So, you know, the first tip I would say is if you do fall behind, don't feel like you have to make up for that entire lost word count in the the following day. You know, you don't need to have a 5,000 word day or an 8,000 word day to catch up. Go ahead and recalculate your words based on how many days you have left and just add an extra 500 or whatever it is so that that is a less intimidating number. And I often will do that. And then, you know, secondly, if, if catching up isn't a possibility for you, I would say don't give up. You know, I think that we feel like, oh, well, I'm not going to hit the 50,000 words, so it's not a success. 
But that's simply not true. The only person who's winning or losing in this situation is you. And, you know, the, the amount of words that you write in November isn't the important thing. It's the writing. It's the fact that you're making progress on your story, way more progress than you probably ever would any other time of year. So you just have to remember that that's what this is about. It's about writing the story. It's about making progress. It's not about the 50,000 words. You know, they, they set a word count to give you something to work toward. But the real thing that you're working toward is putting your words onto the page at a rate that is much more, uh, much quicker and much more dedicated than you probably get the opportunity to, to do any other time of year. Yes, totally. And, and you have to keep in mind, it's National Novel Writing Month. It's not Publishing Month. You're just trying to get things done. You're trying to, like you said, move the novel along because you're going to, by the time you're done with November, you're going to be a lot farther along in that month than you might have even been months and a, you know, months ago. Yes. And one other thing too is there's something about sticking to it regardless of what, whatever you run into throughout the month, any obstacles you run into, there's something about sticking to it to the end that helps you build the confidence in yourself that you can set a commitment to yourself and actually stick to it. And I think giving up regardless of where you're at, it, it takes that away from you. And I, and then on the other side, I think that if you stick to it, regardless of whether you hit 10,000 words or 30,000 words or 50,000 words, just following to the finish line, it, it really gives you a sense of accomplishment and a sense of confidence in yourself to stick to the commitments that you make to yourself and to your writing. Yes. Now let's talk tools because that's, you know, kind of the heart of it all. Because I remember when I did Nano, I had to rely on a lot of different tools to get it done. Oh my gosh, I'm a tool a holler. <laughs> so let's let's talk tools I love for a technology. minute. Technology. <laughs> so what what are some tools that you use that you can recommend that people who are trying to do nano can use anywhere to get their words in? Yeah, so I gosh, there are so many where do I even begin? <laughs> <laughs> um obviously I think most writers are aware of Scrivener. So that's a great tool for actually writing your novel and keeping it organized. Um, on, on the other hand, though, I write on a Mac and I use Storyist, which is very similar to Scrivener, but it's just for Macs. And it's a little bit of a simpler tool, which I like about it because I just don't want to spend so much time trying to keep everything organized and learn everything. So it's nice to be able to just put everything in there and not have to learn all the special fancy tools. <laughs> um, but it's got a very similar layout. So that's a great tool for actually writing your novel and keeping everything together, keeping everything organized. Uh, obviously, there is going to be a lot of editing involved afterwards, so you don't want to have things all over the place. Um, but for those who maybe write in different places, I really like Google Docs. Um, it's, it's just a website where you can go and have a document on there, and it's on the internet so that wherever you go – you can pull it up. If you want to write a little bit on your lunch break at work, you can just pull it up on the internet and know that when you get home, you can pull it up again and it's got all your new words on there. And um, so you can take it with you wherever you go. And then uh, let's see what else. Oh, Y Writer is a one that I started using when I couldn't afford to buy a writing tool. So for those who may not have the money to invest in Scrivener or Storyist right now, check out Y Writer. It's really simple. Um, it's Y, the letter Y, writer, and it's got the same basic layout as the other writing programs, but it's free. So that's a, that's what I started with initially. Um, another one I've used is called Focus Writer, and it's a really cool tool that you can download, and it blocks out your entire screen except for your writing space. So that's a very cool thing to have during Nano so that you're not distracted by other things. And um, let's see what else. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and throw my own tool in here. Um, I, I created actually because I love the stats of Nano so much that I created a, an Excel spreadsheet called the Writing and Revision Tracker that allows you to plug in your daily word count and will create calculations for you about how much you've accomplished each day, each week, each month, and each year for up to eight projects. And it's something that you can use all year round. So it's just a great way to keep track of during nano how many words you're writing each day because you do in on the nano website you plug in a total count for where you're at each day but it's cool to be able to see the breakdown of how much you're writing each and every day and maybe like which days you're writing 
more words. So say Mondays are really productive for you, but you're struggling on Fridays and you can really see that very clearly. And then take that stat, take all those stats and do it for the whole year. Ooh, great. Like how, and how do those uh, spreadsheets, how can we get those? So if you go to my website at jamieraintree.com, there is a tab at the top for writing tools and webinars. And you can go there and download it. And I'm actually putting it on sale for Nano for all those Rhymers out there giving you some solidarity. And it's going to be only $1 to download that. Ooh, that's awesome. So guys, make sure you visit Jamie's website and get those because you'll want them. Yeah. Some of the tools that I uh, found that I used a lot, I use my phone a ton. Cause I write, mm-hmm. I, I write so much faster on my phone than I do on my notebook, you know, on my, on my you laptop. You seriously tap it out with your thumbs. You're oh my your gosh, dude. I, my, my <laughs> word, my word per minute on my phone is probably three times that of my laptop. I can text uh, so much faster than I can write. So I spend a lot of time texting stuff into Evernote. <laughs> that's awesome though, because yeah. then you, can, you have it with you at all times. And I think that's such a smart way to sneak in. I mean, really, if you are sneaking in five minutes, uh, you know, wherever you go, that adds up really quickly. It does. So I, I wish I could type that fast on my phone. It does. I would stand in the. I would. I would find the longest line in the grocery store, Jamie, and I would stand there and I would. Ooh, this is a great time to write, and I would just write and just push my cart a little bit and write and push my cart a little bit. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> and then now you know we we live near Bush Gardens, and so I would just go to Bush Gardens and I would stand in a long line. And I'm like, okay, well, since this line is long, and I want to ride the ride. I'll just write while I wait. That's and so, perfect. And so I love see, using Evernote. But yeah. yeah, that's what I love about Nano is it forces you to be creative about <laughs> writing. You know, it teaches you to be able to write in all different kinds of circumstances, and and I think that's why the word count is so high because it it pushes you out of your comfort zone. Yes, you know, we can all sit down and write a few hundred words every day, no problem. But when you have to write sixteen hundred sixty seven words every day, it forces you to be creative about it. And I think again, those are skills that you can take with you for even outside of November. Yeah, yeah. And then later on, I discovered a tool called Transcribe. And so what I started doing is I started voice recording all my stuff and then I would transcribe it later because there, like you said, there are days when I couldn't write mm-hmm. because of obligations or family or whatever the case may be. So I would just uh, open up my voice recorder and I would just talk. And then on the weekend, I would just dictate, I'd take all the dictation and then mm-hmm. I would uh, type it in because Transcribe lets you upload your MP3 and then it'll slow it down, the playback down so you can actually type to your speed. That's perfect. I love that idea. Yeah. So there, yeah, there, I mean, there's so many ways to get creative with nano. You don't have to just stand behind your computer guys. You can move around, you can text, you can type, you can email it to yourself. However you can get it in, just get it in. Yes, absolutely. Now, um, so let's talk about, you know, just some of your other experiences with nano. What are some of your favorite things about participating in nano? Oh, gosh, my favorite things. I feel like we've talked a lot about them already. Um, One thing is that I've made a lot of friends from going to write-ins, like true, true friends that, you know, I met them at a write-in and we've, we just clicked and, and I think it's such an awesome opportunity to meet other people who have the same interests as you. So I think that's one of my favorite things. And then, um, let's see. I just really love the the feeling of, you know, running wildly through my story. I, there's this connection that you get from writing so many words every day. There's this connection to your story that you just don't get any other time because you really are spending so much time thinking about what comes next and then writing the actual words and then brainstorming some more that you're you're really writing almost 24-7 in your head. You know, you're dreaming about your novel. <laughs> yes. You're, you know, you're thinking about your characters while you're doing the dishes, you know, while you're driving. It's just a it, total immersion in your story and your characters. And I love that kind of connection that I don't get the rest of the year because we have so many other things that we're juggling. But then, you know, when November comes around, we just put everything else aside and it's all about the story. And I, I absolutely love that. I, I miss it all the rest of the year, which is why I make November such a big priority, no matter what. No matter what comes up, I have to do nano. Yeah, no, I completely agree. You know, because one of the challenges is that once it's over, you know, you, you lose that. Some people lose that momentum. You know, yeah. a lot of us lose the momentum. We lose the, you know, the daily habit starts to dwindle back down. Like, 
What are some, I mean, you have the spreadsheets, which are awesome and definitely hope people will download those to be able to keep that momentum going. What are some other ways people can just keep that feeling alive for the other 11 months of the year? Yeah, I think the most important thing is continuing to reach out to the writing community. That has been so imperative to me, and it's something that I still make a priority all the time. I'm always connecting with other writers. I think that it helps you stay focused. It helps you feel like what you're doing is important and that there are other people out there doing it because as much as we're all huddled together for November, there are still so many writers out there that are writing all the time. And so if you stay connected to the community, it can give you that sense of enthusiasm for the rest of the year to know that you have other people that, you know, are, are supporting you that you can count on that are there to pick you up and brush you off when you get frustrated. I just think the writing community is so important for other writers. And I do attribute so much of the success that I've had to being connected to the writing community. Yeah. And I think also one of the benefits is, you know, once you've finished Nano and you've gone through the editing process and you finished your book, you've got people who are excited to hear about that. Yeah. People, are, people are excited to, to, to see that you've actually got it done. You've published your book. And then a lot of the times, a lot of these people have gone on to buy the books that, you know, I've written my book through Nano and people just buy the book because they're just excited that, you know, that they were a part of that process. Like we all talked about it on Instagram and we just helped each other through. And now there's a product. Absolutely. People love those success stories. They absolutely do. And it doesn't even matter if it's about writing or anything else. People love to see other people succeed. You know, we love the underdog story. So people are, are really supportive of what we're doing. And I think that that's really cool. And, and I think that a lot of people have seen how much support they can really get, even from people who aren't writers. Like, you know, for instance, my husband knows <laughs> by now <laughs> when November rolls around, he just, you know, he, everything, he takes over stuff for me because he knows how important it is to me and he supports that. And, you know, my family knows that it's a, a priority to me and they've seen me do it repeatedly. They've seen how important it is to me and how I've been successful at it and what it's meant for my career. And, and so it, I think setting that goal and, and letting people experience it with you, experiencing that accomplishment with you. It it really creates a sense of understanding and encouragement and support. Yes, it absolutely does. Now, do you have any additional tips that you'd like to share before we come in for a landing? Yes. Some tips. Uh, let's see. So we've talked about connecting with writers. One thing, one funny thing I always do for the ladies, I always trim my nails every year before I get started. <laughs> it's a silly thing, but you know, just being closer to those keys, I think really helps. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. And then, yeah, I think spending some time really getting to know your characters and setting up your milestones. I think for me, the biggest thing is, is figuring out what those milestones are, the inciting incident, the first plot point the midpoint, the second plot point, the climax, the resolution, having all of those figured out, you always have what your, what your B is, you know, you're, you're starting at a, you want to know what your B is. So you always know what you're writing toward. And I think that keeps me from ever getting too caught up on anything. So I, I can always have, you know, something that I'm writing toward. And, and then when I hit that, that next plot point, so when I hit the first plot point that I know what the midpoint is and I can write toward that, so it keeps you from losing momentum and trying to figure out what's coming next. So having those things figured out ahead of time is really, really helpful. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Yeah, I think that those are the big things that, yeah, what we've discussed already is, I, I just think the most important thing is connecting with other writers. And if you do that, I think you'll be really surprised at what you can accomplish in such a short amount of time. Yes, you will definitely be pleasantly surprised. I know that after I did my first one, I was blown away that I had that much, you know, that many words. I was like, wow, I didn't think I, I, didn't think I could write that many words. It's amazing. <laughs> and when you get like, when you get to 25,000 words and you're halfway and you look back and you're like, how did I do that? <laughs> I know, I know. I remember how intimidating it was like when I had to write a 500 page, you know, paper in school, you know? Yes. <laughs> or, or can you write a you know a full page front and back and I'm like this is this is torture but you look you're at, like single space or double yeah, space. <laughs> yes. and now we're writing you know pages upon pages you know hundreds of thousands of words and it's it's not as difficult you know as we all believed it to be 
Yes. And you know what? Print it out. Print it yeah. out. As well. I think it's such a cool thing to be able to see what you're accomplishing. And it really spurs you on to keep going. You know, at the end of the day, go ahead and print out those pages so you can physically see that you're making progress. I think that's such a cool thing. It is. It is. Like for me, I definitely felt the same way. Like when I printed out the entire manuscript, I was like, holy cow, I've got this stack that can't even fit in a binder clip. Yes. <laughs> and it felt it's so, so good. Awesome. It felt yes. so good. So I share that with you. Well, great. Well, good luck to you on Nano this year. Thank you. Good luck to you too. Are you participating this year, Chris? I am. I am. I'm working on a new book this year. So I'm, I'm, I'm right now I'm trying to get all my interviews lined up for it. It's a nonfiction book. So I'm trying to get all these interviews lined up this month so I can get all mm-hmm. the, all the manuscripts ready to, I mean, all the transcripts ready to go. And then I'll start awesome. writing. So yeah. We'll have to have to do some online sprints then. Yes, we will. That sounds great. Now, before we go, can you please let my audience know how they can reach you and again, talk about and how they can get the spreadsheets on the website? Yeah. So my website is where you can find me at jamieraintree.com. And you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash jamieraintree. And if you want to get a copy of that spreadsheet that I talked about, you will go to my website and look for the tab of writing tools of workshops and you can find it there. It's called the writing and revision tracker. And then while you're there, also go ahead and check out my blogs. I do a lot of blogs for writers and I have some tips on there about nano as well. If you want to check those out. And uh, if you like what you see, then go ahead and subscribe to my newsletter or email me if I can do anything to support you. Awesome. And all these things will be in the show notes. You'll find all the links there. Thanks again, Jamie, for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. This has been great. Yeah, no, thanks. I'll talk to you soon. Okay.